Hey guys, Misty here. Welcome to my week's 9 and 10 keto update. If you are new here, I started a ketogenic way of eating on March 6 at 425 pounds. I weighed in the 1st of May at 405 pounds for a loss of 20 pounds. Um, the last two weeks, I normally try to film weekly updates, but unfortunately week 9, I got the flu. So um, before I go any further, thank you so much for all your kind comments, etc. Um, there have been a couple of comments that I don't really know how to answer them because they're pretty ableist, and I don't know if you know what that means, but it's basically assuming that everybody has the same ability as somebody else, and that's not always true. So um, I have been dealing with extreme muscle weakness since October. Those of you who've been with me since week one, you know that, but there are always people that come in and this is the first video that they'll see. So I wanna make that very apparent that we eat out a lot because my husband can't cook and there are days where I physically just cannot. It's all I can do to get up, get some makeup on my face, get dressed and get to work. So, yep, we're eating out a lot. Yep, I'm sure we're getting a lot of um, bad ingredients on our body. But at the end of the day, I can only do what I can do. And for right now, while I'm oozing, I'm not going to stress about it. Okie dokie. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Week 9 went fine. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, my eating was great. I was in a great mood. Um, I was feeling great. And then Thursday, I was a little, I felt a little nauseous. Which is not, we had gone somewhere. I was riding with a coworker. And I was like, oh, I feel like I'm getting a little car sick. And she's like, really? And we've ri we ride together all the time. We've been co-workers for four, almost four years. She's one of my best friends and we go out together a lot. We'll go run and get something for the staff or just run some errands, go to Starbucks, something like that. And so I, she was like, I, I was like, you've never made me car sick before. I said, but I, I just don't feel good. So we went and did everything that we needed to do, got back to work and it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, oh man, I don't think I'm gonna make it, <laughs> make it home. So there were several times when I was driving home on the interstate that I was afraid I was gonna have to pull over. And I'm so glad that I didn't have to. I barely made it home. I got home, um, stripped down, grabbed a wet washcloth, put it on my head, climbed in bed, and just tried to stop the room from spinning because at that point I was just so nauseated. A couple hours later, Fever, chills, <laughs> achiness, the flu. So I started Tamiflu on Friday and was on it, uh, I think, until Wednesday. So the weekend was pretty shot. Um, Thursday night, I went a little bit off plan because I asked Rob to get me some um, egg drop soup, and he did, and just the smell of it was like, no, not gonna do it. <laughs> so, um, I had a can, a small can of cream of chicken soup left in the pantry, and I just went ahead and diluted that as much as I could and had some of that. And that's the only thing that I felt like I could keep on my stomach. I had to put something on my stomach because I had to take my medication. And I knew if I didn't eat, that medication was gonna come right back up. So, started Tamiflu on Friday. Um, Saturday and Sunday was just, like I said, I was just so completely out of it. I was just so sick. Monday, I started feeling better. I went to my primary care physician. I, um, I have, I was referred to a rheumatologist and I'm filming this on Monday, May 15th. As of today, I have an appointment for the end of the month. <sighs> I'm not the least bit excited about it, but whatever. So um, we talked and I asked him if he had any inkling about what was wrong with me and he said no. And that kind of, kind of sucks because I probably have a closer relationship with my doctor than a lot of people do because I've seen him so damn much. <laughs> In 2015, I, for four or five months spread there, I saw him every single week because it was just one thing after another. Um, last year, starting in July, I saw him two, three times a month because first it was the gallbladder and then it was the thyroid and then it was the muscle weakness and then it was the thyroid and then 
was the nerve damage, pain, and it's just been one thing after the other. So I could tell, I know when he's bullshitting me or when he's trying to keep things under wraps so he doesn't freak me out. And I, I could tell that he was being completely honest. So it's just been rather frustrating. I mean, I am so, and I will forever be grateful that I don't have a neurological disorder, but I am just really frustrated and over going to the doctor. And Tuesday just kind of sealed that for me. Tuesday I went to work, was feeling so much better. I could eat. Um, I was still not 100%, but I felt 65, 70%. And uh, my my friend that I work with, we went, she's like, oh, I'll come with you. I was like, okay, and that we'll go over, you know, and grab lunch or run whatever errands we needed to do for Teacher Appreciation Week this week. And I said, oh, it shouldn't take more than 15 or 20 minutes. Oh, I should have kept my mouth shut an hour and a half later. It's never taken me that long. I was frustrated because when I got there, they called me back. I didn't know anybody. I didn't recognize a single person. And then they kept getting me screwed up with another person, with somebody named Mary. I can see why that would be a little confusing, but... Um, there was a stand, fill in doctor because the regular doctor had a family emergency. So, and this guy, I don't know if he was violating HIPAA, but every single exam room door was open. He never closed them. I heard conversations all around me. It was really, really frustrating. And then he comes in to me. And instead of saying, hey, Hi, Misty, my name is Dr. So-and-so. I'm filling in for your doctor, and we're going to talk about how things went. His very first words to me were, why are you drinking and taking pain medication? And I was like, what? I said, I don't drink. And I said, I definitely am not going to drink and take pain medication. He's like, yes, you do. And I said, no, I don't. And he's like, the labs don't lie. I'm like, is this about the alcohol? And he's like, yeah. I said, well... I talked to my primary care physician who said that that is probably an excess of ketones in my urine. And he was like, no, that's not a thing. And I was like, huh? What? I said, yes, it is. I said, I trust my primary care physician completely. He said, no, that's not what this is. And I finally said, you know what? I'm not going to argue with you. I said, but I'm diabetic and I don't so he finally called in a nurse and said, will you please call the lab and ask them if this is a possibility? And I was like, oh my word. So by this point, I'd already had a really bad taste in my mouth. On top of that, I gained 10 pounds. I was pissed about that. <laughs> so she came back and she's like, oh yeah, you know, they said if you're, you know, your blood, your diabetes is uncontrolled, etc." So that initial urine test I did with them was before I started keto. I think it was probably a week before I started keto. So, and my blood sugars were high. And then the one after that, I've been on the keto diet. So ugh, he was just really frustrating. And then he and I were talking about my neck and he said, he examined me. He's like, oh, you didn't even need an epidural in your neck. I was like, what? He's like, it's your shoulder. It's the muscles. I don't remember what he called them in your shoulder and I was just like you're gonna get injections and at this point I was like I don't care you are not touching me let me go so I can see my normal doctor <laughs> so, uh, so at this point I was just done I've struggled with emotional eating emotional responses to stress my entire life I mean my entire life and I was really really fighting those urges the first two months of keto and dealing with all that crap from the first neurologist and then going through all the testing and then just I had been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks that I was at the very end of a very frayed rope and I absolutely was so I, Rob and I, um, were making plans for dinner and I picked a place that would be low carb because at the end of that day, I was over it. I was done. I was tired. I was sore. I was emotionally drained and I just wanted to go have a nice dinner with my husband. 
And, well, the place we wanted to go to had trivia night. <laughs> and he is an introvert, and I'm an extroverted introvert. So we don't like to be around, you know, a bunch of people who are drinking and being loud and stuff like that. And I especially could not handle it that day. So I finally said, you know what? I just want fried chicken. <laughs> it's like, I want fried chicken. And Rob's like, where do you want to go? I said, I want babes. And if you're unfamiliar, if you're not in Texas, babes is some really daggum good fried chicken. But it's also mashed potatoes and gravy and biscuits and corn and beans and another vegetable. And it's just the the food of my childhood. And I, I gravitate toward that when I am having a rough time. So we decided not to do that. I was like... I said, I don't want to do that. I said, I do. I said, but at the same time, if I eat all of that, my blood sugar is going to be 500 in the morning. And so I said, I don't want to go quite that far. So we went to a burger joint here called Burger Island. And um, I we split an order of mozzarella sticks. I've been on a mozzarella stick kick. I don't know what the crap. I had an order of pickles. And then I had a kid's chicken strips with tater tots. And I ate... Um, two, they're like two little chicken strips like this, but I ate probably 20 tater tots. And then I was pissed. <laughs> I was so mad at myself and just, I was just frustrated. I was frustrated with the doctors. I was frustrated with me. I was frustrated with my life. I was frustrated with my body. I've just been in a pissy ass mood. And so... And on top of all of that, I was just completely dumbfounded how I had gained 10 pounds. And this, people, is why I don't weigh myself every week. And those of you who weigh yourself every day, God bless you. Because I would be just, I would just give up. I would just give up. And that's exactly what I did that day. So Wednesday I had my therapy appointment, thank God, because I was just like, and I almost didn't go because I was like, all I feel like I need to do is just gripe, 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 and he's like, that's what I'm here for. And when I was telling him about feeling guilty, and he finally just said, listen, he said, you have to stop feeling guilty. He's like, you were trying to, you know, make yourself feel better. And he said, I would rather you do that with food rather than turning to, you know, alcohol or recreational drug or something like that. And he said, you're just going to let it go. He's like, give yourself a night or two to emotionally eat and then get back on the horse. And that's exactly what I did. And Thursday, I got back on it. And I'm just, my blood sugar is back down. And I am, I was really swollen. So Tamiflu causes weight gain, or it can cause weight gain, and it can cause weight gain for up to a year. And I'm like, oh, great. But um, I'm pretty sure it was the Tamiflu, probably a mix of the Tamiflu. My blood sugar was elevated because I was sick, um, trying to get enough fluids to keep me hydrated. I had a little bit of edema. And your body can fluctuate 10 pounds you know, five to 10 pounds every day. You know, I may have been constipated and not felt it, felt it, but I, at that moment, I was just like, it's not worth it. <laughs> and that's not true. It is completely and totally worth it. It's, it's completely and totally worth it. But in that moment, nothing mattered. So, um, today was a pretty decent day. Yesterday, I tried to do some meal prep. Um, Saturday, we got in the pool. We have a pool, and I've been wanting to get in the pool, um, not only because I just feel better when I'm weightless, but also because I wanted to start doing some low-impact exercises. <sighs> Last year, I could swim an hour, hour and a half, no problem. This time, I got about 15 minutes in before I felt like I was going to be stuck in the pool. And I got myself out. And then on Sunday, I cooked some chicken for Rob. He takes chicken every day for a salad. And we buy the big bags at Costco. And then I defrost it. And then I grill it for him. I made us lunch. I made my chicken thighs and some green beans. Um, both of those recipes are on this channel, by the way. And then I cooked a couple of, I cooked a pound of bacon in the oven. And by two o'clock, 
I was sitting on the couch because my legs had given out and I couldn't, my arms were just gone. They were just dead. I couldn't do anything else the rest of the day. And then not long after that, I had to go get in bed and I took about a three and a half hour nap, which is becoming the norm after I do just the tiniest bit of work. So, that's so hard. It's getting harder every day. And I'm just frustrated and tired of not being able to do the most normal things. So, and to top it all off. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so let's end there. So, um, I'm about to get into some things that are TMI. So, if you are a gentleman and you want to exit now, exit stage left. I will see you next week. <laughs> um, I'll actually have a Foodie Friday video for you on Friday. And then I'll have my update video, hopefully up by Sunday, but it may go up on Monday again. You've been warned. So, in 2000 and... 13, so almost four years ago, I had a uterine ablation, which means that um, they basically went inside and singed, burned the lining of my uterus to prevent me from having a period. And I did that because that's kind of the first step before you decide to have a full hysterectomy or a partial and then a full hysterectomy. I, like many people, suffer from, I don't have PCOS, um, and I don't have endometriosis, but I've always produced, overproduced lining in my uterus, and my periods were long, heavy, and hard. <laughs> the cramps, some days, were just unbearable, and yesterday, I had some spotting and I thought, oh, maybe, you know, it's, I didn't know what it was from. I didn't think anything of it. Today I went to the restroom, took a shower this morning, nothing. Didn't see anything this morning, thought everything was fine. Went to the restroom when I got to work and there was blood everywhere. And I was just like, oh, I was like, am I starting my period? Because I didn't feel bad. And I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's just a hemorrhoid or something stupid like that. So I went back to my desk and then I had the worst period cramp <laughs> ever and I was like, oh no. So I've read um, like in the Keto for Badass Babes group and a couple other places that Keto can kind of wreak havoc on your cycle. I wasn't expecting it <laughs> to make me have one. So I think that also had something to do with my frustrations and stuff last week because I was PMSing. <laughs> so I should have known when I wanted chocolate yesterday because chocolate's normally not my thing. But yesterday I was like, I need some chocolate. So I have a call in to my primary because if this, I mean, I have a feeling this is going to be a really long period because it's, we've already started off with a bang. And I, I don't, I'm not at a place weight-wise where I would feel comfortable having a hysterectomy. Um, I want to be down to at least 375, maybe 350 before I would feel comfortable going under the knife like that. Plus, I'm like, I'm already dealing with this other <laughs> crap. I don't need bleeding out of orifices to be another one. So... My, my current, my, so instead of doing that, I would, you know, probably go back on hormonal birth control to stop the periods. But my concern with that <laughs> is that I don't want to do anything that will potentially screw up hormones or blood work or testing or whatever with the rheumatologist. So I called my primary care physician today and left a message. Hopefully he will call me back tomorrow, Wednesday. And I basically just said, hey, I had an ablation four years ago, started a period today. Should I wait to see a gyno until after the rheumatologist? And hopefully I will hear back. Um, if this is longer than a week, I'm just going to have to go see a gynecologist. Um, there is... I could potentially have another DNC. I've had two of those done so far. 
and that helped. The very first time I had polyps on my uterus and oh my god, I was heavy bleeding for a good two months before I finally was just like, I'm gonna die. I told my mom, I was like, I'm gonna die. I was bleeding out, I was hemorrhaging, it was horrible. And so I had polyps and he did a DNC and I was fine. The next three years were great. Three day periods, <laughs> barely any anything, and I was like, yeah, and then pfft, that all went to pot. So yeah, sorry for the TMI, but if you are new to keto and you've had issues with your cycle, this may or may not affect you. I think that's why a lot of doctors put people with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, on a diet like this is to help you know, help their hormones and help their cycles, insulin resistance, which basically what POS, PCOS is related to, I guess. I'm not an expert on that, um, but I know I've been tested several times. So the problem is now I have to find a new gynecologist because after the ablation, um, I did have some breakthrough bleeding about six months later, and I was like, listen, let's just do a hysterectomy. And the doctor was like, oh yeah, okay, no problem. Get me under. I wake up and they haven't performed a hysterectomy and the anesthesiologist came up to me while I was still like in recovery, not 100% myself and said, I think this is this update is on this channel somewhere about how I needed to have weight loss surgery and not even think about having a hysterectomy and I was like, what? So it's been a week guys. This has been almost 25 minutes. Holy cannoli. So I am doing much better this week. I um, cooked that bacon for bacon wraps today. Um, I had three slices of bacon, um, some mayonnaise in between two pieces of romaine lettuce. Um, tonight my husband and I are splitting a ribeye and I'm gonna pan fry some asparagus in the pan, the steak juices, so that'll be good. Uh, I paid for my staff to have snow cones today and um because it's we're celebrating our teacher appreciation week this week and i didn't have one so yay for that <laughs> so yay for a tiny little thing so like i mentioned i will see you friday for a foodie friday um hopefully i will see you guys this weekend for this update but if not i will see you next monday for another keto update so thank you guys so much um i hope you have a fantastic week and i'll see you in the next one bye for now